In today's video, I want to show you how you can extend the capacity of practically any power station with a lithium iron phosphate battery pack like this Power Urus unit. Hello everybody, welcome to Freely Roaming, my name is Dan. I've shown you guys a lot of power stations and 100 amp hour batteries on this channel over the last year or so. While they're both great at keeping you powered out in the wild, being able to inexpensively extend the capacity of a power station can get a little bit expensive. Of course you can just charge your power station when you drive, however you have to drive a lot if your daily consumption is on the high side. If you're charging your power station with a cigarette lighter socket, by default it can only charge at up to 120 watts. That's because the vehicle power is 12 volts and the socket capability is limited at 10 amps. So 12 volts times 10 amps equals 120 watts. Anything higher than that is pushing the capacity of a cigarette lighter socket. You can also use solar panels, of course, but that's also relatively slow and it's not reliable if you're camping under shade or if it's overcast. And of course, it's expensive. A compact folding solar panel can cost as much as four to $500. And the other alternative is you can just buy a bigger power station with a ton of battery capacity, but that's really expensive. Some of these newer power stations have extendable modules that you can buy and just attach to the bottom or to the back, but those are gonna be higher end units. So it kind of defeats the purpose of trying to do this on a budget. Today I'm gonna to show you guys this Power Eurus 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This is a battery made by a company called Roy Pow. Roy Pow is a battery company that specializes in marine grade waterproof lithium iron phosphate batteries. Power Eurus is Roy Pow's subsidiary and they sell these battery packs for land-based vehicles for a significantly lower cost while retaining the same high quality. As you can see, the form factor is pretty standard to sort of run-of-the-mill 100 amp hour batteries. And for today's demonstration, of course, I'm gonna show you a full capacity test to make sure that this Power Urus unit is worth what they claimed, but I'm also going to show you exactly how you can use a battery just like this to extend the capacity of practically any power station. I'm gonna do that with a little cheap, inexpensive, 12 volt to 24 volt boost converter. So let's first go to the capacity test of this battery and then we'll show you exactly how this is done. So here I've got the Power Urus lithium iron phosphate battery over here and next to it are five different power stations of five different brands. Some of them are well-known brands like EcoFlow and Max Oak or Blue Eddy. And then some of the other ones are smaller, lesser known brands like this Ide Hill, this Juan Roy, and that Opus power station. And they kind of vary from uh, capacity. This EcoFlow only has about 220 watt hours capacity. These two have about four to 500. This one is a 600. And the Opus is a thousand watt power station. And all of these, I want to demonstrate to you guys, can all be charged with any lithium iron phosphate battery like this one from Power Eras. So how does that work? Let me show you. This little guy right here, this is a 72 watt DC to DC boost converter. It'll take a 12 volt DC signal and boost it up to 24 volts. And uh, what I've noticed is that this is actually going to put out a bit more than 72 watts. It'll actually put out closer to like 110, 120 watts. So that's actually perfect amount of charge for uh, any of these power stations, even the small one. Because this is designed to be plugged into a cigarette lighter. Now, what's different between plugging this into this boost converter and then charging through the battery versus just wiring it directly without a boost converter is that not all of these have the ability to convert a low voltage charge into the proper voltage that it needs internally. So this will help do that because in order for you to charge a 12 volt battery from another 12 volt battery, the power coming in has to be higher than the local voltage inside that power station. Now some of these have circuitry inside the power station to automatically detect that, but not all of them do. And just in case they don't, this will do the job because 
All of these have built-in MPPT charge controllers as it comes in. So what that does is whatever voltage that comes in, as long as it is higher than what it needs, it'll be able to transform it down to the proper charging voltage for these power stations. Another thing that this does is this will regulate the amperage coming in from the battery as well. Because the internal resistance of these lithium iron battery packs are so low, it will put out a ton of amperage. It'll put out a ton of current if it's not regulated in some way. For the most part, these power stations should have internal circuitry to prevent that from happening. But using this just gives you some sort of added benefit. This is another current limiting device to keep the power from the battery pack from rushing into these power stations so quickly. And as you can see, we're, you know, you don't need super thick wires for this because we're only talking about, you know, five amps tops running through these wires. So, for example, this is, these are the wires that came with this uh, boost converter. And it's only like, yeah, it's only like 16, maybe even 18 gauge wire. I think it's probably 16. The letters are really small. Anyways, 16 gauge wire. All I did is I, I put XT60 connectors to them. I do this a lot, and what I also did is, with this battery bank, I made this kind of little pigtail connector that's also an XT60. So I can easily just plug in my boost converter. And if you look in the back, it tells you this is input on the side, the red side, output from the yellow side so input so power as it comes in is going to flow this way into the boost converter and come out this way so it'll come in as 12 volts it'll come out as 24 volts so the way you hook, hook that up is you put the battery into the input side of things and now this is activated and now we should have 24 volts coming out of this now, a couple of these power stations have xt60 connectors already like this ide hill and this and there's EcoFlow right there. So I can just plug this in directly and start charging. Let me show you. As you can see, right away it powers up. And now we're charging this EcoFlow at 110 watts from this lithium iron phosphate battery bank. And because this has passed through charging, I can use any of these outlets right away. So even a small power station like this EcoFlow River 2, you can extend this by five times the capacity if you just carry a charged 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery around. So that's one. Let's unplug that. That's EcoFlow River 2. We see that works. Let's try this Ide Hill. Again, Ide Hill also has, it all comes down to what kind of DC input your power station has. And if you don't have the right connector, you can just uh, make up your own. See, what I've done is I've made up a connector like this that goes from X, XT60 to just a barrel plug that'll work with the other ones. But before we do that, let's show you this guy, this Ide Hill. And again, just plug it straight in. So this being a 500 watt hour capacity power station, this power Eurus battery will basically more than double, actually it'll, it'll essentially triple the uh, original capacity just by having this around. Okay, so now this one is actually charging at 142 watts. So that's because uh, the EcoFlow has a built-in limiter on how much it'll take in. That's the Ide Hill power station. And now let's try this uh, this one, Roy. So this is a little different. This one doesn't take an XT60. That's why 
this little pigtail comes in handy. So what I've done a, a lot is I have like a bunch of these little pigtail wires that I've made up. So I can convert from, you know, one type of connector to another, depending on what you want. So I can do something like this. These are just little wires that I made up. You can buy bags of this XT60 or even these XT90 connectors for, you know, just a, a bag of it for a few bucks on Amazon. I'll put links in the description below. Just with a simple soldering iron, you can make all kinds of different pigtails to suit your different needs. So, as you can see, with these five power stations, two of them take XT60 natively. And then this one, we'll show you this one right. This one, I'll just plug in my barrel connector to that. And this happens to take 26 volts, 4.75 amps max. Plug that in. As you can see, it turns on right away. Starts charging. Now this one's charging at 66 watts right now. Part of it's also because that it's starting to get full. So as the resistance increases, the speed of charge will naturally slow down. That's the circuitry built into the battery. You can see this one also has a uh, Anderson power pull options, which is another common one. So that's power station number three. So now let's try this one. This is a Max Oak or Power Oak. I've had this one for a while. I've had this one, I got this one when I was in Europe. So this is actually, this is the one that lives in the van, right under the center console. That's why we have this uh, 220 volt uh, AC inverter in this one. So this has a uh, plug in the back input. See, this one says it'll take 12 to 40 volts, 120 watts max. So this will be perfect. Plug that in. And once again, just works. And by about doubling the size, and once again, we have about triple the capacity, more than triple the capacity of the original capacity of this battery bank. All right, so let's show you guys the last one, which is the Opus. This is a thousand. This is a thousand watt hour battery bank. And it happens to take the same barrel connector. Will it work? Well, you know the answer. Of course it will. Plug it in. Charging at 110 watts. Because this has got a built-in heat sink, it'll dissipate some heat, but if you're going to permanently mount this somewhere, let's say you're gonna mount this battery bank um, inside your vehicle, and you're gonna use this to charge a battery station or power station like this, you can permanently mount this, and it wouldn't hurt to just install a little uh, computer, 12 volt computer fan, to try to help dissipate this heat if you're using this on a regular basis. But I've used this just, you know, just cooling passively and it's worked fine. If you wanted to increase the output capacity of these, you can buy bigger ones of these. Or what I've done also is that you can wire multiple of these in parallel. So I've wired two of these in parallel to be able to output about 240 watts of power for bigger power stations. And that works out really well. So then you might think, well, you know what? What if I uh, what if I drain this battery while I'm on the road? I can go charge this, you know, find a get a campground and just charge this up, my power station. But there's no way to charge that up. Well, it's true. So that's kind of the downside is that if you don't have a way to charge this, then you're basically, you know, just back down to the original capacity of this power station again. But you can just bring a pretty compact lithium iron phosphate battery charger with you. For example, I use this Ardroid 30 amp battery charger that's made for lithium iron phosphate batteries. So I've also taken the connector off of it 
and swapped over an XT90. And I will show you from an XT90 connector, I've made a wire to adapt it to a smaller connector. So from an XT90, I can step it down because it's only 30 amp charge. I know only 30 amps will come through here in the XT60s. The names of these uh, these connectors are based on their rated current capacity. So this can handle 90 amps, and this can handle 60 amps. And these are real common in the hobby world. So you can go ahead and plug that into the wall, and this is how you would charge up your lithium iron phosphate battery pack. And this charges it at 30 amps, which is super fast. This will charge this battery up in a little over three hours. So this is much faster to charge this and then use this battery pack to charge your power station when you're on the road than it is to try to charge this up with only a 120 watt charger because this charges it at like close to 500 watts. And then, you know, once you're on the road, you have time to just keep this plugged in and dump power from here to there. So there you go. That's my... That's my little uh, battery expansion hack for power stations. And like I said, it works with practically all the power stations out there in the market, assuming you have the right connector. I've shown you guys five different ones today. These are all the guys. A Max Oak, Ide Hill, an EcoFlow, this Wanroy unit, and also this bigger one, the Opus. Over capacity, over 100 amp hours and 1280 watt hours. This is another battery that has performed beyond its rate of capacity. Power Eurus. It's a pretty basic battery, but performed really well. At least in this DC discharge test. Test complete. 105.07 amp hours. 1333.94 watt hours. It was a long test because I turned the uh, output down overnight, so it would be uh, I would be awake when it finished. And here it is, 15 hours and 15 minutes and 55 seconds. 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery by Power Eurus. Pass with flying colors. So that's the Power Urus 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. As you can tell, the capacity test passed with flying colors. And as far as using this hack with your power station through this boost converter, it's only going to work if your power station accepts a 24 volt DC input. However, most power stations these days sold on the market should be able to do that. Refer to your owner's manual to make sure that it can't accept it. This hack is also why I find pass through charging such an important feature for power stations. Without true pass-through charging, it will still work. It's just that if you happen to run your power station all the way down to zero, you're gonna have to wait for it to charge back up before you can use it again, instead of just being able to keep it constantly topped off. Like I said, just about every power station on the market today should be able to take a 24 volt input as well as having pass-through charging. But know that power station companies will likely void your warranty if something were to happen to your power station because you used an unauthorized or unapproved charging method such as this one. Please do this at your own risk and do some research on your particular setup before going forward. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I will also put links to this Power Iris battery unit and also all the parts that I use for this demonstration in the description as well. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.